Hey everyone, just here with a quick message, a special message actually. My first TEDx talk, How Chicken Wings Made Me Unstoppable, is now available to watch. So please, please, please go and check it out at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash TEDx or go to youtube.com and search Shereen Kassam TEDx. Please watch it. Please like it. Please comment on it and please share it. We have to break the YouTube algorithm. That is the biggest thing with TEDx talks. If you ever see a TEDx talk that's got 10,000, 20,000, a million views, it's because within the first 24 to 48 hours, they broke the algorithm and they got people sharing it, commenting and liking on it. So I urge you, podcast listeners of Creative Breakthrough, you are all over the world. I mean, you guys are in Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, Australia. Please, please, please share it on a WhatsApp group, share it on your social media, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever you all are using. I'm so out of the loop right now on even what's the hippest, hottest uh, social media, but please just share it with a friend, a family member, a coworker. Please, I just highly, highly beg you, if you have ever found anything in this podcast enlightening or interesting or a good takeaway and you were like, I love Shereen Kassam, this is your time to repay me by sharing this TEDx talk. Now, let's get into how I did a TEDx talk. Welcome back to a special episode of The Creative Breakthrough, y'all. Like I mentioned, my TEDx talk, How Chicken Wings Made Me Unstoppable, is now available to watch at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash TEDx or go to YouTube and type in Shireen Kassam TEDx. Take a watch, hit that like button, write a comment, and please share it. Let's break the YouTube algorithm and make this thing go viral. At least, at least 100,000 views. That is what I'm aiming for, 100,000 views. Okay, so what is a TED Talk? Well, you've probably seen this on YouTube or you've probably had somebody forward you a TED Talk sometime in your career or your life, but it stands for Technology, Entertainment, and Design. And these are talks between eight minutes and 18 minutes that have an idea worth spreading. And that is the huge, that's the slogan of TEDx and TED ideas worth spreading. Now I didn't do a TED talk. TED talks are usually for like celebrities. So one day I will do a TED talk, knock on wood. I don't have any wood. Um, but I did a TEDx talk, which is a grassroots initiative created in the spirit of TED's overall mission to discover and spread ideas worth spreading. So first of all, I just did the TEDx talk. So it was at the end of January of 2022 and it was amazing. There was 12 speakers from all across the United States. I was looking fly on stage. Thank you White House Black Market for sponsoring my outfit. I looked hot. I think it's super important to feel and look confident when you're speaking and I definitely looked and felt confident. But the really cool thing was is my talk was about chicken wings. And if you know me, you know I love chicken wings. So being able to go on stage and talk about chicken wings was just one, amazing, but two, the audience was so receptive. I was a little nervous and I'll tell you why in a few minutes, why I was really nervous that the audience was going to be um, not on my side. But then the really cool thing is, is I was the last talk right before lunch. And at lunch, there was a chicken wing station. This restaurant in Eustis, Florida called Tilly's sponsored chicken wings and they brought chicken wings and they brought a bunch of different sauces and they had this big poster that said, resauce yourself. And people could tie in my talk with chicken wings and it was so amazing. And my parents came, which was really amazing because if you've been listening to this podcast from day one, you know, my parents don't really come out to support me a lot. Um, and so this was really cool that they came to support me. Um, my sister and my brother-in-law Farhan were there as well. And my cousins came out, Nerez and Zamina and friends from my work. And it was just amazing how many people showed up to support me during this initiative. And I will say that this was probably one of the hardest, most time consuming, soul searching initiatives, creative initiatives I have ever undertaken. So if you are thinking of doing a TEDx talk, just know that it is a huge time commitment. I mean, six months of my life were fully dedicated to my TEDx talk, which is why I really, really, really wanted to hit 100,000 views. So please go watch it, hit the like button, comment on it and share it with someone, share it with a group, share it with a bunch of people, share it with your ex, share it with my ex, for God's sakes. I don't even know how to reach him, but find out and share it with him. 
Okay, so why did I do a TEDx talk? Well, 2020 was a rough year. You all know that COVID came, 2020 threw us off all our paths, right? Like all my comedy shows got canceled, my speaking engagements got canceled, and I didn't really know what to do. And then I just poured myself into my podcast and you guys were so receptive and supportive of this podcast. And then I got to 2021 and I was like, I'm going to put the podcast on hold because the world is coming back alive and we're going to start doing things again. And that was a joke. And we didn't, we still had Delta and Omicron. And it was just like this unbelievable, like, what am I doing with my life? Right. I'm just, I just felt like I was turning my wheels and I, I felt lost. I really felt lost and I didn't know what my goals were anymore because all of a sudden comedy was off the table. Speaking was off the table. The podcast was off the table and I said, okay, what am I going, what am I doing? And this idea of doing a TEDx talk fell on my, fell on my, on my lap. And I said, this sounds really interesting because I've always wanted to do a TEDx talk. I just never have really sat down and put the time and effort behind it because I know it takes a lot of time and coming up with the idea worth spreading was really weighing on me because I didn't know if I had an idea worth spreading. Cause here's the thing, right? And I'm sure some of you have thought about this too, is when you see TED talks, they're done by celebrities or they're done by really important people who are really um, knowledgeable in their field or in their space or their industry, right? Like they come in and they talk about something that they've been doing for years. And now there's me who's like, I don't really have, I don't really own anything, right? I'm not known as a researcher for category or my career is not in one space. So what do I go on stage and talk about? And so I had to do a lot of digging. And that's how I came up with the idea of how chicken wings makes me unstoppable. Cause I know that I'm super passionate about chicken wings. And I know that I wanted to have a talk that was somehow engaging with chicken wings, but also humorous, but also serious. So anyways, I decided to do the TEDx talk. Um, if you want to do a TEDx talk, I would say you need to spend a lot of time on your idea worth spreading. People are always going to keep asking you that. The application asks you that twice, not just once, but twice. What is your idea worth spreading? Um, and then you got to put this application together, which took three weeks of my life. And like it was more tedious than a college application because you've got to think deep and it's just as competitive as a college application. I mean, my, my TEDx uh, organization only took 12 speakers out of 215 applications. So it was very, very competitive. And then once you get in, you have to write a script that can be from eight minutes to 18 minutes. That's a lot of writing. That's a lot of structuring, editing, working through your idea, making sure you have to remember this is on YouTube. The whole world can see this. The whole world is going to see it because you all are going to share it with the world, right? Am I right? Do I hear it right? I'm just playing. Um, but yes, please share it. But yeah, every, and, and here's the thing. People hang on to every word you say. So you want to be very mindful of the words you pick. So then it's, I spent four months writing a script. And then once you write it, you have to memorize it. Yes. For some reason, I always thought that there was going to be screens um, like prompters, like what are they called? Like, uh, you know, those things, those things that have the prompters that have the words on it and you're just reading. I thought that's what they were going to have, but supposedly not all TEDx events have that. So you have to memorize it. And that took me three to four weeks. And let me tell you, I don't think my short-term memory is working because it was really hard for me to memorize this talk. I mean, towards the end of the three weeks, I started just taking things out of the talk. I was like, I, I cannot memorize this sentence. I cannot memorize this paragraph. We are, we're omitting all of this, omitting, omitting, omitting. And then you've got to rehearse and practice. And I say that because it's super important. I was talking to a woman a couple of days ago and she was like, just practice on zoom. Because at the end of the day, when you do your TEDx talk, you're talking to a camera, which is super true. When you do a TEDx talk, you are not performing for an audience. You are performing for the cameras because your talk is going to go on YouTube or TED.com. Like the whole idea of a TEDx talk is for it to be on this platform, on this media platform to be shared with the world. The audience is just there to give you someone to talk to, to be engaging, to give you that energy, to laugh when you need to laugh or chuckle, but you're performing for a camera. And so this lady was like, all you need to do is be comfortable talking to a camera. 
And I do not agree with that because there is an audience there. And if you get stage fright or you're not confident talking on a stage, it's very different for me to sit here and talk to this camera one-on-one -on -one with you all right now than it would be if people were sitting around this table right now listening to me talk. So you really want to work on your public speaking skills and your performance skills and making sure you feel and sound confident. Because I can tell you when I've, I've been to a few TEDx events now, you can tell who is comfortable on stage and who is not comfortable on stage. But all in all, it was such an incredible experience, you all. Like, if you have ever wanted to do a TEDx event, highly suggest you do it. It was such a great opportunity, one, not only to dig deep within me to write something that was going to be spread across the world and heard across the world, but what was really amazing was how many people came out of the woodworks to support me, not just at the event itself, but through the process. So when I say that, I mean, in the beginning, like when I decided I want to do a TEDx talk, I had a friend who reached out to someone I didn't know and asked if they would help me think through my ideas, right? C help me come up with what is my idea worth spreading. Then that person helped me flush it out. She didn't have to. She didn't even know me. And she took time out of her life to help me. Another person who's a comedian that I'm not really close with, who's also a speaker, a TEDx speaker, helped me craft my application. And then over the journey, I had friends, I had family read my script, give me advice, listen to me perform, practice, give me venues to practice. And people actually gave me theaters to go in and practice on or stages or even audiences. They said, you can come into my classroom or you can come to my open mic and perform in front of my audience. I mean, the number of people who I was shocked were supporting me in this endeavor was just amazing and so such so fulfilling because there are times as a creative you start to wonder like are people on on your side are they in your corner are they do they believe in you right and sometimes after you've been doing something for so long you just start to wonder do they believe in me right and doing this TEDx talk made me realize that people still really believe in me and believe in my mission and believe in my success and believe in my journey and that was so fulfilling um, and so that also made the TEDx talk really special to me, but yeah, I just wanted to stop in real quick. Uh, Michelle Obama has not called me back yet or tweeted me back yet about being on this podcast. So as of right now, this podcast is going to stay on pause, but if by chance she doesn't hit me up or even Trevor Noah, or maybe now even Hassan Minaj, because I it is a goal of mine to open for Hassan Minaj. If you don't know Hassan Minaj, he's on tour right now. He's doing his new one person show. And I have been trying to hit him up to open for him because he's been having South Asian comedians open for him across the United States. And I cannot seem to get it. So if you know Hassan Minaj, please let him know that I want to open for him. If you know Trevor Noah, please let him know I want to come work for him. And if you know Michelle Obama, please let her know I want her on this podcast. And if you can't do any of those three things, just watch my TEDx talk, please, 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 and share it. Share it with five people, 10 people, 20 people, your social media network, WhatsApp groups. If, you're WhatsApp, if your parents are like my parents and they can send it out to everyone and their mothers, send it to your parents. It is clean. There is nothing um, PG or rated R in my TEDx talk. It's a clean PG-13 TED talk. So again, you can go watch it at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash TEDx or go on YouTube and search Shireen Kassam TEDx. Thank you guys so much. And again, follow me on Instagram, Funny Brown Girl. I'm trying to hit 10,000 followers so I can do that fun swipe up thing to get people to go directly to the TEDx talk. So follow me at Funny Brown Girl. Till then, I wish you all the best in your endeavors. Join our Facebook group, Creative Breakthrough, and best of luck in everything you all are doing. Drop me a note, let me know how it's going. And until next time, Good luck and take care and stay safe. Signing out, Shireen Kassam, a.k.a. Funny Brown Girl.